Hi everyone. Within the past week, I've begun development on my dream game, an aquarium building game called Neptune Harbor. I decided to start this devlog as a way to exhibit my work and get community feedback on the progress. Before we jump into the actual content, I wanted to give you a little insight into my life. My name is Nate, I'm currently a rising senior at the University of Texas at Dallas, and I'm studying game design and development. I've loved video games for as long as I can remember, with fond memories of playing the Game Boy Advance being some of my earliest. I began creating games with the Unity engine after a coding summer camp I enrolled in in the 7th grade. Since then, I've developed a number of small projects in my free time, but nothing with the magnitude of what I'm working on now. For this game, I took inspiration from some of the games I love the most. Popular building sims like Zoo Tycoon and Tiny Tower, and cozy, community-based games like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing have influenced the design of Neptune Harbor the most. I want to balance the aesthetics and elements of these games to create one where players feel a sense of drive and accomplishment, while also being able to relax and enjoy the coastal vibes of the game. I began the development process by trying to find a distinct style for the characters and fish featured in Neptune Harbor. Starting out with a slender, more realistic rendering for the character, I moved towards something more cartoonish, round, and cute. Inspired by games like Daddish and Super Cat Tales, I utilized a style of flat shading and well-defined outlines to finalize the design. The creatures of the game followed a similar design trajectory. Next, I created quick sketches of the floor plans of several buildings which the player will be able to traverse. These sketches were simple, combined geometric shapes, which I then used to imagine myself in the appropriate setting to generate the decoration, lighting, and NPC data necessary to bring these locations to life. Using the style and size of the character I designed earlier as a base, I built out the interiors of a couple of these buildings. I began with the pizza parlor, which will house a minigame which players can utilize to make extra money, then moved on to the hardware store, where players can build the rooms of their aquarium and purchase furniture for their guests. Since the hardware store is much more integral to the gameplay of Neptune Harbor, I imported it into Unity to create the base functionality for the game. I started this process by giving the player a rigid body, a component which connects it to Unity's physics and applying velocity to it based on input from the arrow keys. This allowed the player to move around the scene and connect with the colliders I had placed along the walls of the room. I also flipped the sprite based on the direction of movement so that it looked as though the character was always looking forward. I also tied the character's rendering order to its negative Y position and did this to several other objects in the scene so that the player could walk both in front of and behind furniture. Finally, I set up a mask for the entrance door so that the player could walk off the side of the room and disappear through the store. After this, I returned to the design of the player character to create a walk cycle for more realistic movement as well as player customization tools. I want the customization capabilities to reflect the diversity in race, age, and gender within my audience, so having a range of skin colors, hair colors, and hairstyles was important to me. Furthermore, I want players to be able to express their own individual style, so I created some clothing variation, with many more to come later. This necessitated a breakdown of the original character into 12 separate images, which are layered on top of each other to create characters within Unity. I was planning to use these character customization tools to create the NPCs for the game. However, I quickly realized that I'd have to make a large number of unused sprites for unique NPCs that won't need walk cycles. Due to this, non-playable characters will have to be split into two groups. The first group will be randomly generated, can use walk cycles, and won't directly interact with the player, meaning they can use the customization tools. The second group will be manually created, will have unique names, 
and will be able to speak or sell items to the player, but their more unique nature means that it will be quicker to create their sprites without the use of the customization system. Moving on, I decided to spruce up the interior of the hardware store using Unity's 2D lighting system. Although it was subtle because I wanted to replicate the fluorescent lights present in most hardware stores, I hope that these details will make the interiors of other buildings more atmospheric and eventually give players more control over the aesthetics of their aquarium. After I finished the lighting, I created what I'm calling interaction prompts. These pop up to signify to the player what they can and cannot interact with, notifying them to press a button in order to open a menu or speak to an NPC. The final feature that I was able to implement this first week was transitions between scenes. Now when a player walks out of the door to the hardware store, the camera stops in an animation plays to bring them into the next scene. Before the end of this video, I want to take a minute to discuss the next features that I want to implement. My first priority is getting the building system working, with both rooms and furniture. After that, I want to focus on dialogue with important NPCs. My final agenda item for the near future is adding the pizzeria to Unity and updating it to work within the game. I think that's all to report for this first devlog. Thank you so much for tuning in and making it to the end of the video. If you're interested in following the rest of my development journey, I'll be posting updates onto this channel regularly, so feel free to hit the subscribe button below. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit at the handles shown on screen. See you next time.